How many Emacs users are there right? other than Gabe? I, okay, that makes two of us. <laughs> oh, three, okay, yes. More by the end of the talk. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, um, Emacs, the, uh, I mean, you guys know the editor, so Emacs comes with this excellent, uh, plugin called Cider that does the closure, uh, sort of, uh, integration. Um, I was actually intending to have a nice VM where you guys can try this all out in, uh, it didn't work out too well because, uh, what happens is that this ancient Emacs config, my Emacs, I've been using Emacs for a couple of years now, so no, no, a couple of years, a couple of decades now. It's nearly old enough to vote in the general election at this rate. Uh, so I, I, I didn't want to confuse that with what is the actual side of functionality, but at some point I gave up because I couldn't recreate my uh, suitable configuration anymore. Uh, those of you who have used Emacs long enough will recognize the problem. So my, my Emacs config that I use for, uh, for closure is, is, is mostly on this right hand side, but you find that uh, as I go through the demo, I'll be using some stuff that isn't down here. Um, the main one, of course, is Cider. Um, and it has a bunch of nice functionality. Uh, the, uh, it, it plugs into Clojure using this uh, interface called nREPL, which is the same thing that the Vim one uses, and I think the, the Eclipse also uses. Uh, normal stuff, syntax highlighting, all that. Uh, it ties, it plugs into most of the common Emacs uh, code completion, so you get all the fancy drop downs. It, it has the test Clojure test integration. I'll show these off later, but uh, basically a whole bunch of nice functionality. But there's some stuff it doesn't cover. Uh, refactoring, it doesn't cover, so I'm actually uh, going to show also uh, refactoring integration. Uh, I'm going to show the, uh, the little templates uh, integration. Uh, of course, uh, Paradit is the structured editing mode, for which I think Vim also has a similar thing, and a lot of emulation for that. So those started on closure. Um, I don't have a fancy project to show off, unlike the rest of the folks, unfortunately. No closure reloaded workflow or anything of that sort. Um, what I'm going to use is actually the uh, pedestal demo. Um, so, oh crap. Um, so what happens is that uh, for this, you uh, the integration happens, uh, it's a uh, side jack in, I already jacked in. So it's it's going to complain. Uh, so that connects you to the uh, launches the REPL and connects you. Uh, since I'm connected, it's it's there. I can do the standard stuff, which is uh, I can send, uh, I can evaluate this buffer. I can send it over to the uh, REPL. I can run it. Um, I can uh, let's see. I want to find the test uh, test test. Test is here. Uh, I can load the test. I can run the test. Oops, I didn't run the test. Test pass. You can see at the bottom there. So four test pass. Uh, if I make the test fail, the uh, uh, closure is good. Uh, now test fail. I can go jump to the failing test. Um, what is, I think, uh, different, uh, unusual, like unexpected for people who haven't used Emacs is just the level of integration here. Um, so let's say, like, uh, how many of you use the Clojure Grimoire, the, the uh, nice little... Yeah, so that is uh, basically a nice online set of documentation uh, here. Uh, it's, uh, it originally started as a closure cheat sheet, and then uh, it kind of evolved from there to more or less various uh, uh, um, contributions. So, so it's, it's community documentation. Yeah, it's community documentation more than the standard uh, closure documentation. You can see the standard closure documentation at the bottom of the screen now. Uh, with this for DefN, it's, uh, it's uh, there. That's how you use DefN. But if you want more information, you can go for the Grimoire uh, documentation. It loads it up uh, using the Emacs browser. And uh, yeah, this shows you, okay, here's the example, here's uh, um, some tips and all that, how, how you use it. 
Yeah, I find the grimoire much more accessible. Yes, so it's it's far more accessible than any 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 doc string that you get from 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 Clojure, I think, especially for the more complicated uh, functions. Uh, where just the, the, the names of the variables don't help. Uh, standard stuff you get, uh, so template completion, it's it's a pretty complete set of templates here. So here's the auto completion, it shows, okay, here are all the functions. Uh, you see little letters here indicating whether it's a bar or a, um, yeah, a macro and all that. Um, so let's say I want to complete def, or I can complete def n, it's actually more exciting. So here I can complete uh, my function uh, doc string as my first. So you just like hitting tab. To go yeah, to I'm just hitting spot. tab to go to all the various places, right? Cool. So, so uh, this is, I mean, this is the templating from not from Cider, but from another. Uh, it's a library called uh, yet another snippet, uh, YA snippet, which is again based off the text main snippets. Um, so I can evaluate this in the uh, REPL, you can see the result there. This, this is the, basically the result, the evaluation pops up there. Um, let's see, refactoring, I have actually a complete set of refactoring tools here. Uh, it's going to be hard, I, I don't want to show all of them, uh, uh, demo all of them, uh, the list, let's see. So this is not part of CIDR also, it's a separate plugin. This is basically the list of available refactorings here. A uh, whole bunch of stuff that you find in a standard IDE. So I can, uh, what would be good? Uh, let's see, I can go to server. Let's say I want to refactor, create server, right? So uh, refactor, uh, renames, oops, uh, I need to evaluate it first. Oh no, screw that. Right. Well, the only problem is remembering the keystroke, right? Uh, no, I'm not using I'm just saying like, I have the same problem. So actually, I have another plugin which shows a bunch of uh, the keystrokes, so I can actually hear in this case, it's uh, unfortunately I am in a bad state and I don't want to restart my REPL because that may create disaster. But I can rename, I can find usage. Uh, what's, what's with me? Sorry? Why, why will it be a disaster? I don't know what state it's in right now, so... <laughs> Changing state in the demo is not okay. Yeah. So I, I prefer not to do that. Let's see whether I can try it on another file to refactor. I'll try on the service file. The service file has not been good to me for refactorings. Um, yeah. Refactor that keyword again or something. Right? Yeah. So refactor usage. Ah, oh, screw that. I'm going to kill the ruffle. That's right. <laughs> What can go wrong? All right, let's wait for the ruffle to come back, maybe, eventually. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with, uh, with the, uh, I assume, how many of you use, he, Familiar with Paradid and, and, and the keystrokes, so not familiar with Paradid. Familiar? Familiar? Everybody use Paradid, some form of structured editing? Paradid's uh, pretty cool with the structured editing. Where's Paradid list? So, I mean, it's a standard stuff, like, uh, I mean, you want to move up between the, the various levels of, of expressions. You can navigate there, you can combine two adjacent expressions, split them up. Uh, you want to, to uh, surround one part of your code with, with parentheses. And it's basically just it's it's since this is more or less you're operating on the syntax tree. It's it's just op, it's just moving things around in the syntax tree. Okay. Ah, it doesn't look good, but uh, it doesn't look too good. But uh, I think it's better than before. Uh, let's load it up. Uh, let's try to refactor. No, nope, it's in this crappy state. Um, okay, so no demo or refactoring. Uh, what else do I want to show? Uh, it. Oh yes, rainbow delimiters. Uh, I don't know if this is a bit harder to see, but you can see that as I move through the various levels, uh, you can see the little uh, the colors change for the parentheses and if, if bright red, slightly darker red, all the way up. So I can see which which block I'm in. 
level I'm at. Um, and the usual navigation around. This is looking up the stuff. Uh, uh, there is actually uh, a squiggly closure, which just shows the this is the flight. It's what we call an Emacs fly check. It runs a bunch of uh, the closure uh, checkers. These are more or less uh, core type. This is a core type checker, and then there's Eastwood, which is more of a style checker and basic basic. Uh, it, it combines all these together and have it run insider. Unfortunately, on my installation right now, it's borked. I find it's borked half the time, so I cannot really recommend it. <laughs> so, but it's, when it works, it's it's pretty nice. Um, what else is? I saw there? you have Magit in your uh, in your notes. I'd love if you could share that. Uh, yeah, Magit is probably one of the best uh, Git GUIs. I don't know how to show that. Uh, okay, so here I have two changed files. This is Magit, uh, the, the Git uh, integration for, for Emacs. So this is basically the, the, ma the main page, the, the status page for, for Magit. You can, uh, you can view the changes here. I can stage, uh, I can stage the changes. Let's see. I can actually stage partial changes. So I am in server now. Let's change something else. It's not the quotes key for it. All right, so uh, let's I can stage partial changes and all that, which is useful compared to some of the GUI tools. So I can just stage this part here. Uh, the history is also it has basically it exposes the entire. Uh, uh, a, a lot of Git functionality through uh, a reasonable GUI. So here is a, a, the, the uh, Git log. Um, it's uh, uh, this this pop up here. Let me expand it. This is basically a, the first level menu, and then you can drill down. So you can do everything: cherry picking, um, bisecting Git, and then sub modules, loading, rebasing. The rebasing and the and the Diffing and the cherry picking merging is excellent because then you, if you're used to e Emacs, you get the, you can do the three-way merge all within using the standard Emacs tools. Um, so really nice uh, Git uh, UI. Um, I, let's see. Uh, how many of you guys use Git and 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 and, and, and what, what do you, how do you use it through most of the time command line usage? Half familiar and half source tree. Source tree. Yeah. Okay. Intelligent. All command line. All command line. So I mean the, the nice things are uh, let's say like uh, the the ref log. Uh, I don't know the refs on this. Uh, it's yeah. If I had another project, I can show you the. It's nice for cherry picking from across uh, branches and ref logs. Um, the uh, the Tree, the list here is it's quite straight, but uh, I mean you can see that it shows the, the branching structure and all that. It shows the, the tags, version tags. Yeah, yeah, I can probably show what happens when I try to revert something. Uh, yeah, what can go wrong again? Uh, so here I have. Uh, Unmerged README, so I can uh, I can see the differences here. I uh, highlighted red, green, whatever. These are the changes. Uh, if I want to merge it, so this is the uh, Emacs three-way merge. Excuse the tiny font size up there, but uh, you can see the list of merge commands. Uh, I can go through it. So this is the left side. This is the uh, Original, wait, which side's which? Left side's original. Uh, left side's original. Right side is the. the no, sorry. Left side. Right side is original. Left side's new, and then the the bottom is the, the current merge. Uh, so um, yeah, this one's a boring merge. Whatever. Okay. So. Uh, What's cool about this, I think, is. 
that if you learn, if you understand Emacs, all of these different modes, you can leverage what you know about Emacs and how to use it, right? So all the keyboard commands, I don't have to take my hands off the keyboard, but mm -hmm. like with some of the GUI tools, they look nicer, but I don't find myself as efficient in them because I, I have to use the mouse, and I, I'm just not the mouse Yeah, I mean, it's, it's as you pointed out, it was, uh, that, uh, it was IntelliJ, right, with the list of, uh, of, of commands, the pop-up list of commands, and I mean, it's for Emacs, everything is tied to the command, uh, uh, it's, it's a command that can be used. So normally, the, the joke about Emacs users is, and, and that's why I'm showing the shortcuts in the corner, is just which, uh, it's just a matter of pressing control alt in some letter or something, and uh, but there is a whole list, extensive list of commands that we can, uh, that's available, and all these, like here, open line is mapped to control O and can see the elements. Not not every command is mapped to a key. Right. Um, not everything is also available in the menu, so this is basically how you would navigate that. So for stuff like the refactoring commands, for example. Uh, uh, yeah, all CLJR and the CLJR namespace, and you can see these are the list of refactoring commands here. Um, the other nice stuff, which uh, uh, also is somewhat broken because I haven't done closure development in a while, so uh, Slamhound is an excellent uh, tool uh, for those who don't know it. Slamhound? Yeah, so Slamhound uh, it should be familiar to William Gibson fans. Um, Slamhound does the, the uh, um, so if you have, I mean, uh, the, it was in the IntelliJ demo, right, where, where you have, uh, let's say, like you start using a function, it's not really important in your namespace. Uh, so Slamhound would basically try to find it and then would suggest it imports at a point of time. So there is an uh, integration for that into Emacs. Also a bit iffy. The Slamhound, uh, it comes in two parts. One is a, a command line tool and the other one is the, the Emacs integration. The command line tool works great. The Emacs integration keeps breaking because of the the way it tries to tie in with the cider. Um, but the command line tool, I recommend it. I think it works with Vim as well. I don't know what other integration it has. Um, debugger. I wanted to show the debugger. Uh, I don't think anybody has showed closure debugging yet. Uh, so I think that will be nice. Let me see what I can debug here. Uh, service. Uh, so, uh, the fraud stuff from page. Because is that okay? that's probably the reason why everything is busted right now, but uh, that's because I did an update on one side without the other. So CIDR comes in two parts, the Emacs side, which is written in the Emacs list, and then the, the NREPL side, which is a plugin for, for line, and there's a plugin for uh, boot as well. Anybody using boot, actually? Nobody? Nobody uses boot? It looks like the greatest thing ever, you know? It's, it's, it's like, yeah, it, it, but the problem for me for boot is that it's to start line, you can just init, create a project, and it's just right out of the box. Boot is okay. You start with a blank file. Now what? Um, I'm really not getting this uh, uh, demo working. Uh, let's see whether that works. Uh, so home page. No. No. That, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean it ran, but the, the instrumentation, the debug instrumentation didn't take. Uh, okay, sorry, no debug demo. Uh, unfortunately, my side uh, and repo session is busted. Uh, okay, uh, I think I've covered everything I wanted. Magic projectile. Part of it, closure refactor. Yep, uh, okay. How about the, uh, I saw, like, it actually shows the lambda symbols in your Emacs. Oh, yeah. 
That's interesting. Um, I didn't expect that out of an editor, right? Yeah, which I don't even remember which library I use for that anymore. It's it's another uh, it's not part of my standard closure uh, configuration, unfortunately. So is that just like some Emacs magic that is literally like what it says there isn't a lambda character? It's it's translating the, the ASCII into a lambda so that you can read it more concisely. What you're seeing here, for example, is a lambda that shows up from uh, an Emacs Lisp. Uh, but uh, yeah, I could get the same in here if I do a find. Function, I also get that. Uh, right, so, but if you like, what is it? There's no, that, my brain doesn't it, it doesn't have the lambda in the, in the file, right? Like, no, it know? doesn't. So, same that I can, I mean, it's uh, for okay. here, if I back up, you start seeing that I can actually okay, go cool. through. So, it's just that uh, Emacs just makes a kind of interesting yeah. precision translation layer. Uh, it's it's uh, it's yeah it's just a, a visual representation similar to uh, the uh, new lines and whatever else it's uh, if it's that same uh, it's a library that actually it can if I there are several levels to it you can turn it on just for these lambdas you can actually turn it on for stuff like uh, equality symbols so this if I turn it on to a higher level it will actually convert this to the fancy whatever. Uh, oh right, like a different symbol. Yeah, symbol. yeah, the math symbol and all that. Um, so it it actually looks very nice in certain languages. Haskell looks really nice in Haskell. Um, doesn't I mean for for Lisp and all that? It's usually the lambdas that, that show up. Uh, it looks very nice in JavaScript too. If you if you have a certain style of JavaScript. Um, let me see what else. Uh, company mode completions. I showed that. Okay, I think that's all I have. All right, thanks guys.